Hi everyone, Amy here, and I have a really fun birthday card to share with you using some stenciling and 3D embossing. So I have this Floral Vines 3D and this Stacked Blocks stencil from A Colorful Life Designs and this gorgeous Sending Love and Hugs Paper Rose die. Now here's a photo of the finished card to show you the direction that we're headed. I'm so pleased with how this card turned out. So I'm going to show you how I made it. Now I have some Party Collection mini ink pads from Catherine Pooler. I'm just deliberating here for a moment, figuring out which kind of direction I want to go in terms of color. So I get the folder out just to kind of look and inspire me as to what color palette to go with. And then I do end up going with this gorgeous yellow, the teal, and this grape. I think it's Grape Crush, um, probably Aquatini, and I don't know. I don't remember the names, but they're all party collection, and they worked beautifully together. So I'm laying down this stacked block stencil, and I am actually working on a panel instead of the card base. The reason for that, um, you often know I usually work on a card base, but I know I want to emboss it. So in that case, I don't want to be working on a card base. I want to be working on a panel. So I'm starting with the lightest color in the center, and I'm kind of going wide on this panel panel because I know that I'm going to have some overlap and if you've worked with yellow then you know yellow oftentimes kind of gets lost in the shuffle and I didn't want that to happen so I made sure that I made it a nice wide strip. Now I'm coming in with this teal color and letting it overlap with the yellow to create a really pretty green color and then I'll do the same thing on the top side. Now I don't want to go from the yellow to the purple because they don't necessarily get along and I don't want to muddy up this design at all. Now the purple will go with the teal so I will Will kind of come on the very top and the very bottom and overlap the purple with the teal and I know that that will be fine. So just bear in mind a little bit of color theory um, when you're choosing your colors just to make sure you don't kind of um, unintentionally create neutrals. So here's the purple, it blends beautifully with the teal and then again I'll bring in just a little bit on the bottom just to tie that in further. So the yellow is pride of place right in the center um, and then I will move on to the next step. Now a lot of times I'll kind of um, tone that down and just do some residual ink blending over it but I really wanted those stark white lines in this case. So I ran it through off screen through my embossing machine um, and I also have this already cut out. I did two layers of vellum because I wasn't sure if it needed that extra separation from the background and then I left the sentiment in white. Now what you're seeing here is me using my Waffle Flowers sticky mat for the very first time. I have it in my Misty here and I'm using it to hold down my die cut. Now to be honest I thought it would hold down a little bit better than it did. So I'm sure this has many uses. I haven't tried it with, you know, stenciling yet or anything like that, but I was a little surprised that it didn't kind of grip onto this better. Now, the reason I'm comparing it in that way is because before I got this, I have been using my jelly plates to hold down die cuts like this and do ink blending, and it really holds it down better. So this is an awesome product. I'm not dogging it at all. It's just that in this instance, it didn't hold it down quite as well as the jelly plate. Now I am still excited to have this, especially in my Misty, because I think it will kind of help hold my panels in place um, and it'll have other uses if I want to kind of use it with my stencils and things like that. But um, this was just my very first time using the grip mat. So I wanted to be honest with you and let you know that that was my experience compared with using my jelly plates. Now I am using some micro dots here just to kind of put adhesive on the back of this die cut. I'm probably going to put it down a couple times just because I've used this sheet before so I've used up some of the dots and I want to make sure I get a good amount of adhesive on the back. And then I will use that to attach it to the first sheet of vellum. And then to attach the second sheet of vellum I'll just use some liquid glue carefully behind where the die cut is so it doesn't ooze out and show through the vellum because if you've worked with vellum before then you know um, adhesive will show through it so you got to be a little bit careful and mindful of that. So I'm getting this lined up and then I will also add the little tittle. I will use liquid glue for the tittle just because it'd be too hard to try and put micro dots on that little tiny thing but I did leave it in the die cut itself. That did make it a little bit easier just to line it up. Um, if your tittle fell out of your die cut then just set it aside or maybe stick it to some mint tape or something so you don't lose it on your desk or worst case scenario if you do lose it then you could use a cute little gem or blingage or something like that. So here you, you can see I'm going to attach that second layer of vellum just to give it some se separation from the background and I'm just putting little glue dots just sporadically 
here I realized I had an extra little piece of die cut, which I'll get in a minute with my tweezers. But I'm just mindful just to put it only behind where the letters are so that it doesn't show when I attach the second piece of vellum. Another option, you could fold the vellum and then not cut one edge of it, and then it would kind of fold over onto itself. But this worked fine as well. Now here I'm going to use my tweezers just to pull out this little errant piece of die cut that was stuck behind there but otherwise this is ready to go now I do want it to have some dimension and pop up off that background so I'm just using my thin foam strips that I get from Amazon I apologize the cord is in the way my battery on my phone was dying um, and I didn't want it to cut out so sometimes I have to finagle around the cord when I have it plugged in but anyway I'm using these thin foam strips here just kind of sporadically throughout the design I had to cut one in half and go really thin for that top word um, just because that scripty word is even thinner still but I do want to give it some dimension and I don't want that adhesive to show through the vellum so another option here would be you could cut a couple more layers or one layer of foam um, out of the word die and then sandwich that behind the vellum and then you wouldn't have to worry about um, anything kind of poking out that would just fit perfectly behind and give you even dimension and allow you to pop the whole shebang up um, off the front of your card so now I'm messing with the fiddly little backer sheets trying to pull those off these tiny little bits without pulling them right off the back of the vellum like I'm doing. Um, but eventually I get there and I am able to create the dimension that I'm looking for and create even further separation from the busy background. So here I'm just gonna line this up in the center. I kind of did the colors the same as the ink blending on the background so that it would match. And then um, I do decide to put this little birthday stamp down. Um, right on the in between the sending love and hugs just going to kind of put that in here this was an extra little bit that i had lying around on my desk it was convenient it fit perfectly in that space and i just used some liquid glue to basically get that down um, in that little center portion now i'm going to add some blingage i have some really pretty sequins that i'm going to lay down but at this point i remember oh i wanted to add some design element onto the inside of the card so here i don't want to go too dark i'm just going to use some residual ink but again following that same pattern of colors just to create some interest on the inside of the card and then i will add the blingage for the final touch so three on one side two on the other with my liquid glue and my jewel picker tool and that's going to finish the design so if you love this stencil and have to have it be sure to use my coupon Amy Fantan. there are thousands of the most unique and beautiful stencils in the shop and the best part is you're supporting a small woman-owned business in Texas so um, thank you so much for spending time with me today I hope you enjoy how this turned out and it inspires you to combine your crafty stash and create some awesome cards so I appreciate it have a good day bye